Philippians 3, beginning of verse 7, reads as follows. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in Him. One translation, I consider it dumb. All right, dumb, D-U-N-G. I hope you all know what it is. I don't need to translate that. Okay, say dumb. All right, don't say it no more. Um, I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His of sharing in His suffering, becoming like Him in His death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. You may be seated. Permit us to tag this text passionate about the Lord passionate about the Lord it is interesting that we can demonstrate passion in every area except the area of knowing and loving the Lord I submit to you that praising and worshiping God ought to be something that evokes passion from the inside that is recognized on the outside. You know, there ought to be something inside of you based upon your relationship with God that just like the old folks said won't let you hold your peace uh, you don't know what it is but whatever it is it does not allow you to be quiet sometimes it does not allow you to be still and when, and when the praise leader calls upon us to lift our hands before him it should not be it should not result in a response that says, oh my god here we go the hands in the air again I feel like I'm being approached by the police department it should be something that should come from the very depths of your soul that says I can give hallelujah because it's the highest praise I have 14 witnesses in the house Passion is missing, is a missing attribute in the churches. And that's a bold and bad statement for me to make. But as I stand on this side of the pulpit, I see a minimizing of passion among the so-called people of God. Some of us have just become compliant and we become settled in our worshiping of God uh, I, I believe that passion exists but I think that that passion probably exists in at least four forms only one of which I believe is acceptable before God some of us have corrupted passion uh, that's the kind corrupted passion say corrupted passion that's the kind of passion that you used to have when you gave your life to the Lord. But somewhere along the way, it has become corrupted because of some folk with whom you've been hanging. Or some folk who have tarnished your view of God by their adverse behaviors. 
some folk that you have hook lined up with who who have minimized the blessings that you have received and have thereby corrupted you in your praise and in your passion. Your amen is now amen. Your hallelujah is holler. Hello, somebody. Is it? There is not much gusto in your gusto. It's just so so. It's corrupted passion. Uh, you're obedient to the praise leader when they say lift your hands. You're obedient to the praise leader when you say cut up your hands. You're obedient in all the directions that are given you from this side of the pulpit, but it's corrupted in your spirit, your passion. It's corrupted. Then, of course, you have what I call diluted passion. Uh, the, the diluted passion is that passion that is derived by having given so much in praise and expecting so much in terms of God's response to your praise and then seeing other people appear to get more out of their praise than you get and you begin to water your stuff down. You back off your praise. I had someone to say to me, I, I, was, I was blessed the other day, but I was afraid to tell someone about my blessing because I don't want to appear to be all of that. Let me tell you, if God bless me anyway, <laughs> it's going to be hard for you to keep me from letting, letting somebody know that I've been blessed. And so as a result of that, we sort of dilute, we minimize, we water down our passion in our response to God. Then we have what's called polluted passion. Yeah, you have corrupted, you have, you, you have diluted, but you also have polluted passion. Uh, and that is the passion that we pick up from other things that we observe that may not really be related to praise and worship of God. You know, all music that people play and sing in church should not evoke passion toward God. You know, some of us just listen to the rhythm and, and we, we pat our feet to the beat, to the beat and, and, and we think that that constitutes a response to God that is passionate when in effect it may well be polluted because your mind was not really on God when you heard that tune. Y'all ain't saying nothing, see. Yeah, so, so sometimes, down, 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 down. Well, that might remind you of last Saturday night. You know, it's, in, it's being played in this place, but your mind is not in this place, and therefore your praise and your worship, your passion is polluted by another life, another lifestyle. And then, of course, we have that compelling passion. That's the kind of passion that I want to have, the kind of passion I want you to have, that, 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 just, that just I don't really have to have anybody to say anything. But something just compels me every now and then to say thank you Jesus. Something just compels me to wave my hand when nobody's waving back at me. Something just compels me to strike up a tune when no music is really being played. There's just something that's compelling me to say thank you God for being who you are and for looking beyond my faults and supplying every one of my needs. Please understand this morning that there is a difference between being spiritual and being passionate. Please get this into your spirit. Now, now you can be spiritual all holy, holy in all that, and not be passionate about your spirituality. Please flow with me if you will. Some of us are so, quote, holy, as you were, quote, spiritual, that we cling to the name of Jesus, but fail to say hello to 
somebody whom we meet on the street. We call on God's name with some extreme and loud voices, but in our minds we're cussing other folk out. Let me see. We we have we have a, a reasonable facsimile of passion. But in many instances, it's not the real thing. 